Well, it's been an incredible journey that took 13 months, a meteoric rise to power for Emmanuel Macron, who founded his En Marche movement just over a year ago. And now, today, he will become France's new president. Let's talk to Nabila Ramdani, who is a French commentator and journalist. First of all, Nabila, I mean, we spoke a week ago when uh, Emmanuel Macron was elected. Has, has France, has the news sunk in, generally, that you have this 39-year-old about to take the reins of power? Well, I think so. There has been, of course, the, uh, his victory has been accompanied by a major party at Le Louvre. A lot of people turned up and there was a sense of excitement as to a new era, as he put it himself, of hope and audacity. And I think people feel generally prepared and, and are expecting, you know, him to put it, uh, forward uh, his new program and indeed implement it. But they're also concerned about him securing a, a working um, assembly, a working majority in the National Assembly in order to do so. And those elections begin in, in just over, a, well, just under a month's time. Uh, we've been hearing about the candidates that his new movement are putting forward to try to get a majority. Uh, how much time has there been for Emmanuel Macron to actually celebrate this victory before he thinks about the challenge that is right on the doorstep? Well, I think he effectively took time with his team to, to pause and indeed celebrate the victory. That's an important, an, achieve, an important achievement for somebody who came from absolute obscurity and, uh, and effectively succeeded in securing one of the most uh, powerful executive positions on earth. But he's also very much aware of the challenges ahead. And he's at the moment in charge of selecting uh, candidates, 577 candidates, to represent him in the National Assembly. And it's proving a very difficult task indeed. Let's talk about what's going to be happening today. I mean, how familiar will it be to the French? Does this, does this ceremony look the same, whoever is uh, taking and handing over the reins of power? Well, yes, indeed. It's a very serious uh, inauguration in France. Uh, there's no official protocol, but there's a series of conventions that uh, presidents have been going through over the decades. And uh, it will be very straightforward. There will be an awful lot of pomp and circumstance although the ceremony has begun, become less formal uh, over the years, but we can expect the, the usual handover of power in the, in the meeting of the two heads of state, uh, the incumbent and the, his successor in the courtyard of the Elysee Palace, the actual investiture uh, ceremony, and all the military grandeur with the military parades later on and all the uh, celebrations outside of the Elysee Palace, which will culminate uh, in a meeting uh, at the town hall of Paris. Well, uh, we just seem to have lost uh, the uh, communication there with uh, Karen and her guests. Uh, in Paris. Uh, I can promise you though there will be much more coverage of the actual inauguration here on BBC World News uh, all just before 0800 GMT uh, in our live French election special uh, in the build up to the actual inauguration. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> now fresh from his election victory Emmanuel Macron will today be sworn in as the youngest ever French president. Yeah, it's a historic day for the 39-year-old and his country. So uh, let's find out what the mood is there this morning. Uh, Karin Giannone is at the Elysee Palace. It's the president's official residence. Uh, Karin, over to you. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Sean. Yes, this is as close as we can get to the Elysee Palace. The street is in absolute lockdown. Let's just show you around. All we can see here, really, are police and the world's media. Journalists are here from all over the world, as you can imagine. It's going to be a couple of hours until Emmanuel Macron arrives. Uh, he's going to go inside the Elysee Palace and then after a private meeting with the outgoing president, Francois Hollande, uh, during which he'll be handed France's nuclear codes, there's going to be a big ceremony, a grand ceremony in the ballroom of the Elysee Palace. And after that, the 39-year-old will emerge as France's next president. A truly extraordinary moment in France's political history. Let's talk about this some more with uh, Nabila Ramdani, who's a French commentator and journalist. Nabila, has it sunk in? for the French that they've got a 39-year-old, the youngest president ever. I think a lot of people have been out and about celebrating with the new president at Le Louvre when he made his victory speech. But since then, they're also very much aware that the president has an immense task ahead in effectively getting into the nitty-gritty of governing. And he's very much aware of it uh, himself, in a sense. It usually is the most difficult task is to win an election and then governance follows. But in his case, 
he won in, he won in the most convincing circumstances possible. And now the difficulty is really starting in putting together um, candidates to stand up for him in the National Assembly to represent his new movement now, La République en Marche, the Republic on the Move. And that National Assembly, that parliamentary election is coming up on the 11th of June, so a, a challenge is very, very close. And how familiar for uh, the French will the ceremony today look, considering how unconventional this arrival into politics has been? This will still remain a very traditional and uh, uh, conventional um, investiture and inauguration. And it's a very important moment uh, in France for all French presidents. There's an awful lot of pomp and circumstance, although it has to be said that over the years it has become less formal. And it's an important day, not just because it will be a straightforward handover of power at some point, but it will be followed by an entire day of parades, speeches, a civil and military tributes and honours and a national day of, of celebration uh, in general. And the security, as it was for the elections, is extremely tight. We always remember that France is still under a state of emergency. Well, indeed, and uh, that's why you see an, an awful lot of uh, riot police officers on the street, but also officers in plain clothes, making sure that everything uh, will uh, go uh, as smoothly as possible. And do people turn out? Do people like to turn out for these sorts of events? We've seen a sort of uh, crowd beginning to build down the street, Nabila. Do the French come out and watch their presidents become inaugurated? Very much so, and especially when it comes to the predominantly military honours, where we'll see the president co go to the Arc de Triomphe and pay tribute to the tomb of the unknown soldier. And it has to be said that Macron was there last week, so in a sense he has rehearsed uh, this part already. Uh, an interesting point is that unlike uh, President Hollande, France, uh, Emmanuel Macron has never served in the military, but he has a very a strong sense of history and the legacy of uh, French, France uh, military, military's legacy. So he very much you know, will put his heart into this particular part of the ceremony. Nabila, thanks very much. So a huge day of events here in the centre of Paris. Remember, uh, just a week ago, that election result, 11 million people didn't vote, though, for Emmanuel Macron. They voted for his rival, Marine Le Pen of the far right. So one of Emmanuel Macron's biggest challenges is going to try to unite the country. Karen, thank you very much. And we got a sense of the security there, didn't we? Mm. The, everything going on behind. Thank you. Yeah, big day in Paris. Uh, Andrew, more programme is on BBC One. That's at 9 o'clock this morning. Andrew, good morning to you. Uh, who have you got today? Good morning. Well, well, from their election to our election, and there's been one thing that's dominated the campaign this week, I think, it's been the battle for the patriotic working class vote. I'm joined head to head with Emily Thornbury, Labour's uh, shadow foreign secretary, and Michael, Sir Michael Fallon, the defence secretary. And also for those who think that's a bit London centric, I'll have Nicola Sturgeon, Scotland's first minister, here live in the studio at nine o'clock. Andrew, thank you very much. And stay with us. The headlines are coming up. Well, it's a very important day in France, of course. Fresh from his election victory, Emmanuel Macron will today be sworn in as the youngest ever French president. Yeah, it is a historic day for the 39-year-old and his country. So let's find out what the mood there is this morning. Uh, Karin Giannone is at the Elysee Palace. It's the president's official residence, of course. Uh, Karin, the security operation already underway, but it's going to be a big day in the centre of Paris. It's a huge day. There's a helicopter overhead. The dignitaries are arriving, Ben. And uh, in the next 20 minutes or so, we're expecting the president-elect, 39-year-old Emmanuel Macron, to be arriving. Uh, let's just give you a scene of, of what's behind us. Uh, there is a crowd growing, but basically, for the last hour or so in this road, it has only been police and the world's media. Uh, it is the focus of a huge amount of global attention and a huge amount of security. Of course, France has been under a state of emergency since 2015. Let's just show you a flavor of some of the newspapers here in France this morning. Emmanuel Macron on the front page of the Figaro magazine. And now it says the difficulties begin. So bearing in mind, he now has to face uh, parliamentary elections to get through uh, the laws that he wants to pass and the reforms. The Le Journal du Dimanche, the Dynamo, the man who's going to blow up the norms and the boundaries of political life. He has already, uh, forming a new party only 13 months ago and now a president of France. The boss, no need to translate one, that one on the front of La Tribune and uh, talks about the challenges he faces for changing France. And then uh, one more Sunday, aujourd'hui en France, Dimanche, uh, a new history begins, 14th of May 2017. Uh, let's get uh, the thoughts of Nabila Ramdani, uh, who's a political commentator here and journalist. Uh, 
Nabila, how, how big a day, how different a day is this from past inaugurations? Well, it's a very solemn day and has always been a very ceremonial day in the transition of power and indeed the handover of power. It has to be said that in spite of all the pomp and circumstance with, of which there will be plenty today, the over time the inauguration has been less formal. For example, in the old days, the president used to wear a white tie and wear the great collar of the Légion d'honneur. But since uh, the inauguration of Valéry Giscard d'Estaing in 1974, they have been dressed up in business suits. So that's uh, quite a, a change indeed. But aside from that, it will be an entire day of celebration uh, with parades, speeches, and indeed tributes, military and civil and it's celebrations across Paris. And the first thing that Emmanuel Macron will do when he arrives is go into a private meeting with the outgoing president, François Hollande, and that's, that's the handover of power effectively and the handing over of, of the nuclear codes. Well, yes, indeed, that will be Emmanuel Macron will arrive, presumably in a car with his wife, Brigitte Macron, the first lady of France, and he will be greeted on the steps of the Elysee Palace by François Hollande, who is officially a bachelor and will effectively be unaccompanied. And there will happen, uh, they will go into the Elysee Palace, they will have a chat, and the official transition uh, hand handing of power will occur with, as you said, the nuclear code being passed over. And uh, that's when uh, Macron's uh, presidency will effectively start. And then François Hollande, the outgoing president, he leaves the building effectively for good. And that's when the, the ceremony which makes Emmanuel Macron president takes place without the former president being there. Yes, indeed. And so, that, so that's a very important um, uh, ceremony. The uh, president of the Constitutional Council will announce the official results of the presidential election and that will officialize uh, Macron's status. He will make the inaugural address as well uh, at the, on this occasion. And it will be followed by a, a lunch at the Elysee Palace with a select number of guests. And there will be parades all afternoon and military honours with the Republican Guard, uh, effectively the cavalry and the infantry dressed in the Napoleonic finery, parading uh, 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 along on the Champs-Élysées uh, with trumps and, 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 and drums, uh, which will also be part of, of the decorum. So a huge day. We've seen the catering van arrive and unload for, for the grand lunch that's going to be taking place. Nabila, very briefly, in the last 20 seconds or so, all the papers are talking about the challenges to come. It seems that the honeymoon period is very, very short. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, they will, today will be a final day for celebrations, but the festivities will be well and truly over by Monday morning when the weight of office will start to daunt on uh, President Macron and indeed his ambitious political agenda. Nabila, thanks very much. Nabila Ramdani and another ch challenge facing Emmanuel Macron as he begins his presidency today is the fact that nearly 11 million people didn't vote for him. They voted for his opponent in the second round, Marine Le Pen of the far-right National Front. So his challenge, or one of his big challenges, is going to be trying to unite the country. Corin, good stuff. Thanks so much. A busy day ahead for you, so best of luck with it all. We'll see you very soon. Corin Giannone there in Paris for it. Francois Fillon with a financial mismanagement scandal and then the Socialist Party, the other dominant force in French politics, uh, choosing a candidate for the presidential election, which was from the far left. He did not attract mainstream support. Let's talk about this uh, some more with uh, Nabila Ramdani, uh, with, uh, who's a commentator and journalist here in Paris. Nabila, I mean, has France really come to terms with how sudden this has been, this arrival to power of this figure, Emmanuel Macron, at the age of just 39? I think it took an awful lot of people by surprise. Somebody who came from an absolute, uh, from absolute obscurity and managed to rise uh, to power and effectively secure one of the most powerful executive positions on earth. Um, and him, Emmanuel Macron won in the most convincing circumstances possible as well. I'm wondering if this may indeed be the arrival of Emmanuel Macron himself, given the amount of uh, police psychos. There we are. This is the moment Emmanuel Macron arrives at the Elysee Palace. A big cheer for the crowd there. His wife's already inside. She's made the journey along the red carpet, but uh, Macron supporters waving the French flag as he arrives for this enormous day before he's even reached the age of 40, Nabila. Yes, indeed, and you've talked oh. us through the... We're believing, uh, actually, it's actually Francois Hollande is uh, 
waiting. Yes, he's waiting just inside them. The two will then have that meeting. Sorry, Nabila, do go on. You've talked us through the official handover of power, and of course, after that, will follow the actual inauguration, where um, which will happen in the ballroom at the Elysee Palace, and has been the case under the Fifth Republic. But on the previous republics, it has happened uh, in at, the, at Versailles, uh, effectively, and Emmanuel Macron will be accompanied by senior officials, uh, including the Prime Minister Bernard Cazeneuve and the presidents of both chambers of parliament, the lower house and indeed uh, the Senate. And interestingly, a, a, a solemn march will be played. Uh, any, uh, Emmanuel Macron is of course a proper music buff and he would have put some thought into the choice of his musical piece. And, uh, um, and so the, 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 the ceremony will, the actual ceremony will take place then. And Emmanuel Macron had got out of that car and is making away, his way along the red carpet into the Elysee Palace for the handover of power. Walking towards the outgoing president, Francois Hollande, seen as the protege of Emmanuel Macron, giving him his break in politics, appointing him first as an advisor and then as economy minister, unelected economy minister in the Francois Hollande socialist government. So, a very symbolic day, this relationship between the two men, a complicated one, resulting in this, the literal handover of power from one man to the other. Francois Fillon, who, who would have been uh, the favourite for the centre-right, and his expenses, his salaries that he was paying to his family now under the microscope, and that effectively led to the fact that he fell out of the race. He, he didn't make it through to the second round. Absolutely. I think it's fair to say that until mid-January, when the scandal uh, broke of the fake job scandals, as it's referred to, it would pretty much have been a shoo-in uh, for Francois Fillon. Uh, he had a, a formidable vehicle behind him in Les Républicains. He took over from Nicolas Sarkozy as head of, of the party. And he was hugely popular and he was, you know, it was, everybody was absolutely convinced that he was going to be the next president. And all of a sudden, this immense scandal uh, broke out, which has to do uh, with effectively self-enrichment. And I think that's what made an awful lot of difference in the minds of French people who, let's be honest, are used with the corruption of the political class in, in France, either on the left or the right. But the difference was that, uh, for example, unlike Jacques Chirac or indeed Alain Juppé, who also uh, got criminal charges against him for um, uh, all sorts of uh, corruption, uh, corruption uh, with the UMP party, it had to do with uh, enriching the party and not themselves. And I think that's the main difference that stuck with the French people. So that was the, the twist of fate that helped Emmanuel Macron on the right. Uh, what happened with regard to the socialists? That they had a primary which ended up in a, in a candidate being chosen who was so far to the left that he did not represent the centre to all the right of the party. And, and that, in a sense, was another stroke of luck for Emmanuel Macron. Well, absolutely. And to a certain extent, it can be argued that Emmanuel Macron is, in fact, responsible for the fragmentation of the left. He came in as a, a money man into Hollande's government as economic minister, and he started implementing very uh, right-wing, some people would say, liberalizing economic policies, which divided the left and absolutely angered and upset an awful lot of uh, traditional socialists. Uh, and it effectively led to the uh, explosion of, of the left into three separate parties. The hard left with Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the official candidate for the socialists was of course Benoît Hamon, and the social democrat or the liberal uh, Emmanuel Macron who uh, won the race in the end. We're just waiting, uh, as many of the people inside the Elysee Palace are, for a former or the outgoing president Francois Hollande to emerge from that meeting with Emmanuel Macron, the incoming president, the handover of power, a conversation between the two men who know each other so well, handing over the nuclear codes as well. I mean, this, this very private meeting is, is critical, it's absolutely crucial to this whole process, isn't it, Nabila? Well, absolutely. It is the effective handover of power that is happening at the moment. And in a short period of time, we will see President Hollande out of the Elysee Palace, uh, uh, honored by the Republican Guards salute. 
Uh, of course, he will be welcome at any time by the Macrons in the Elysee Palace, I'm sure. And we'll then follow the actual inauguration ceremony, which is very solemn and will happen, happen in the ballroom at the Elysee Palace, as all has been the case under the Fifth Republic. Uh, it hasn't been the case under the Third and Fourth Republics, where it took place in the Marengo Room uh, at Versailles. So while we wait here, just outside the Elysee Palace, looking at the crowds that are opposite, waiting for Francois Hollande, the outgoing president, to emerge once he has got into that car. We saw parked, I think it's a Citroen, at the end of the 60 meters of red carpet. He will drive away, and that is the end of his term in office. Uh, under blue skies now, the rain has stopped, thankfully, here in Paris. For the moment, back to you, Ben, in the studio. Laws. Let's talk about this some more with uh, Nabila Ramdani. This week, Nabila, we've had the revelation of the people that are going to run for these seats. Uh, not all of them have been announced, but they are a very diverse bunch. Exactly half of them are female and come from all sorts of walks of life. Well, yes, indeed. I think the crucial point here is that the pressure of office is going to be absolutely enormous for Emmanuel Macron. And he realizes that uh, absolutely. And the difficulty will be for him that he has at the moment no uh, constituency behind him and his En Marche, uh, La République En Marche is fairly new, he's just rebranded the name of his party and he has the task now of recruiting candidates uh, to field in the forthcoming uh, um, parliamentary elections to represent him in parliament and at the moment he doesn't have a shoe in a prime minister to act as in, uh, in, in enforcer in the National Assembly, the par parliament's lower house and he has no obvious political allies as well and he will have to find some to um, effectively put uh, to enforce his ambitious uh, political uh, program and as you said at the moment the people who have been recruited so far um, the half of them have no political experience at all and the uh, the average age is 46 which is 14 years younger than uh, the people who occupy the seats in the outgoing uh, National Assembly at the moment. And the people who have been recruited range from all sorts of people from all walks of life, including a former uh, Nobel Prize uh, winning mathematician and a former bullfighter. Uh, as you said, the representation at the moment is 50-50 in terms of male-female ratio, uh, ratio. But this seems to strike me as more of a uh, less to do with ability rather than represent representational uh, correctness. So he will have to find uh, political friends and allies fairly quickly. While you're talking, Abila, we see inside the Elysee everybody in a state of anticipation. That meeting between the outgoing president and the incoming one seems to be going on quite a while now. Well, yes, indeed, they are having what is essentially an informal conversation before Emmanuel Macron sees François Hollande out of the Elysee Palace, as they say, for good, but of course, uh, as, as, a for, as an outgoing president, I'm sure that President Hollande will be welcome at any time as a guest by the Macrons, but uh, will follow uh, the actual uh, inaug inauguration uh, after that. And we saw uh, Emmanuel Macron's wife, Brigitte, arrive a few minutes before her husband. Uh, why did that happen in that order? Well, traditionally, you uh, effectively see the president-elect and his wife, uh, the First Lady of France, arriving in a car in the courtyard of the Elysee Palace, and the president-elect will review the Republican Guard, and then he will be greeted by the president, uh, the incumbent president, and, and his wife on the steps uh, of the uh, Elysee Palace. But of course, uh, President Hollande is an officially a bachelor, and he doesn't have a First Lady uh, with him. So I think in order to avoid some embarrassment, uh, Brigitte Macron arrived earlier on. And she had to make that walk by herself across the 60 metres of, of red carpet in the courtyard. We've been talking a lot about this forthcoming parliamentary legislative election. Uh, there is obviously the fact that the French president is a very powerful individual in the role itself. but. Parliament is essential still for, for doing many of the things that a president wants to do. 
Well, absolutely. I think the irony about Emmanuel Macron is that what essentially allowed him to rise so quickly to, to power is also to do with his ability. We, we discussed how lucky he, he got in this election, but it has to do with his attention of details, the fact that he's very much hands-on in the kind of politics he implemented as uh, Hollande's econo e economy minister. But of course, now that he has become head of state, he will be more above the party politics and he will have to find reliable and capable ministers and indeed crucially a prime minister to enforce his policies so ironically he will be less hands-on and he will have to find capable people to and execute now, his, his program we know that tomorrow monday will be the day that that announcement is made of who will be the prime minister quite a few names have been banded around yes indeed and that would be a crucial choice for him uh, to set the tone uh, uh, as it were for his presidency whether he chooses somebody from uh, the socialist party or indeed a more right-wing candidate would be decisive in uh, the course uh, of action of, of his administration. They will, uh, so far, there have been 24 uh, uh, so socialists who have been selected to represent his La République En Marche uh, movement uh, as, uh, to face uh, these uh, parliamentary elections. And they will, of course, be uh, Gaullists from the conservative Republican parties who would want to leave, essentially, what is a blighted party now in the wake of their suicidal uh, backing, effectively, of an indicted criminal suspect in François Fillon. Now He's that, been put under investigation. Yes, indeed. And now that the Fillons, uh, François Fillon and indeed his wife, will face the possibility of a trial and indeed prison, there will be a lot of able right-wing politicians who would want immediate power and who will be tempted to join the uh, La République En Marche movement. Still with me here outside the Elysee as uh, the crowds are getting bigger, actually. Nabila Ramdani, French commentator. Nabila, I mean, one particular figure who Emmanuel Macron encountered today the president of the constitutional council a very senior politician former prime minister Laurent Fabius you were very struck by what he actually said to him well, yes indeed I mean traditionally the president of the uh, presidential uh, of the presidential council is supposed to read out the official results of the presidential elections and following that the uh, presidency of the president elect officially uh, begins but uh, Laurent Fabius uh, did far uh, more than that, he went on on an elaborate and sophisticated speech, literally praising Emmanuel Macron for his achievement and calling him a man of his time. And of course, saluting the fact that he's a very young politician who has the energy and the vitality to reform France and who fits in with the modernity uh, of uh, the global world we live in. Uh, it has to be highlighted that Laurent Fabius himself was a fresh face in French politics. He came in as a, the youngest prime minister ever, aged 37, in right. the 1980s. So he's familiar. So of he the, knows what it's like to be one of the juniors in a position of power. Absolutely, and a junior with a huge uh, amount of responsibilities ahead, effectively being in charge of a country. How unexpected is it to see such, such familiar and experienced faces in French politics being positive in their approach to Emmanuel Macron rather than being cynical about his lack of years and lack of experience in politics. I think that was an issue initially uh, among the incumbent and the former incumbent presidents. Emmanuel Macron is the only one who hasn't served as an MP and that also stands out. Um, it was also held against him when he started campaigning, somebody who never put himself up for any kind of election, uh, not even a, a councillor or a mayor, or who was brand new in the political landscape until a year ago when uh, he started his En Marche movement. So that was not an advantage uh, to start with, but gradually he managed to turn this into said as somebody who is not an ideologue who doesn't belong to any political party and remember even when he served so he turned what in apparently could be a disadvantage into a formidable asset mm. to challenge the traditional left right wing adversarial system that has dominating dominated french politics for decades nabila thank you very much now we believe